What's it like when Russian operatives target a small town in America? In 2016, there was this Facebook event advertised in Twin Falls, Idaho, an anti-refugee, anti-Muslim political rally, apparently organized online by a group of locals. Due to the town of Twin Falls, Idaho, becoming a center of refugee resettlement, which led to the huge upsurge of violence towards American citizens, we must stop taking in Muslim refugees. Exclamation point. Only recently, Facebook revealed that the event actually came from a fake account with ties to the Kremlin. Twin Falls, Idaho. Population, 45,000. A town of dairy farms and cornfields known for its falls, and now, it's fake news. I think I joked in the newsroom one day that, uh, oh, this is probably just Russians behind all of this, and everybody had a good laugh. So you published this front page article. What was the reaction like in the town? There were plenty of people who uh, dismissed the report, called us fake news. Here's the story. Recently, Facebook confirmed that it had shut down hundreds of fake Russian accounts, which together bought thousands of Facebook ads. The ads were controversial, and they focused on contentious issues in America, like immigration and race. One of the pages, and the only one that's confirmed so far publicly, was an anti-refugee rally that was supposed to be held in Twin Falls. The Twin Falls group seemed to target people like Rick Martin, who runs a local group that's trying to end refugee resettlement. And when did anti-refugee um, politics become your thing? During the Obama administration, I, I felt that it was deliberately being used to change the demographics of America. Do you believe that it was part of an Obama administration strategy to increase the number of, of Muslims in America? I believe his father was uh, had some type of uh, Islamic background. Um, Barack Obama is not a Muslim. I, I'm not saying he's a Muslim, but I believe that he, he favored uh, bringing more Muslims here to make it more of an Islamic country. A terrorist could use the program to come here and cause havoc someday. Even though that's, you've admitted that's a complete hypothetical, it hasn't happened. You know, there's a other instances, and we could sit here and argue about what it. What are the other instances? Uh, I'm not going to be able to give them to you right now. The Facebook group Secured Borders, this is the one that's alleged to be organized out of Russia. Do you believe the news reported by outlets like the Daily Beast and the New York Times that Russia was using social media to interfere politically in Twin Falls? Do you believe it? Um, I really don't believe the Russians had any legal involvement. I mean, they have RT, a network, which I'm sure you're familiar with. I, I do go online and watch RT occasionally. So you know it's um, like a Russian government-backed news organization? Yes, it is. It's funded and backed by the Russian government, yes. So I, I watch networks that report, you know, kind of my worldview. At a local hookah bar, we met a woman named Leah, who owns a clothing store in town and came to Twin Falls as an Armenian refugee from Azerbaijan. We came here this month, 25 years ago. Our ethnicity is Armenian. I've lived here for most of my life, and sadly, there's never been a refugee conversation. It was just Idaho jobs for Idahoans. But very quickly, it started moving into these people are a threat. And how did you experience that personally? You would hear people say, um, you know, they'll, they bring diseases. So refugees are raping our kids. They're Muslims. They're going to impose Sharia law. It went from Idaho jobs for Idahoans to they are terrorists. Several refugees in Twin Falls told us that they feel a change in town, that some people are more hostile than before. They say things like, go home, speak English, can I see your papers? We are here to meet the mayor of Twin Falls to talk about what it feels like to be at the center of an international fake news storm. The refugee resettlement program just sort of has always been. It, there, there's never been large fanfare about it. So when did that change? That started with the initial conversations about 
10,000 Syrian refugees are coming to Twin Falls. So, so people in Twin Falls thought that all of the refugees coming to America were somehow going to be coming here. Right. It's, I read it on the internet, so I know it's true. And just to clarify, in the last few years, how many Syrian refugees have come to Twin Falls? So we have not uh, resettled any Syrian refugees, to the best of my knowledge, through the program. Anti-refugee activists started showing up to town hall meetings. There weren't that many of them, but they were noisy, and they were heard, by certain news sites with ties to the alt-right and the far-right. And then, in the summer of 2016, a local tragedy. What we reported was that a sexual assault occurred in uh, the laundry facilities of uh, an apartment complex in town here. Uh, the victim was a five-year-old girl, uh, and the perpetrators were uh, three boys. I think at the time, they, they ranged in age from seven to 14. Uh, these three boys uh, weren't white. Later, officials confirmed that a sexual assault did take place, something that was serious, but not rape. The boys were sentenced. But online, the story took a new form. The facts shifted. In this new version, a gang of Syrian refugee men raped a little girl at knife point. Websites tied to the far right started pumping out articles about Twin Falls. And that's really what fueled uh, a lot of the movement against refugee resettlement. Breitbart, the right-wing news outlet run by Steve Bannon, a former Trump advisor, dispatched a reporter to Twin Falls. They literally had a reporter who lived here for several weeks over the summer. Most of the coverage that we saw contained some bits and pieces of facts and then a timeline filled in with other information. So we were just driving by and saw a big cardboard cutout of Donald Trump in the window of the C's car lot. And we, we stopped to talk to the owner about his politics. We moved here to Twin in 2013. Uh, originally, when I was five years old, my uh, parents and I uh, immigrated from Hong Kong, China in 1965, legally. Right, okay. And what made you realize that Trump was your candidate? I felt the sense that Donald was truly an American patriot. They were looking out the best interest for America. You're talking about Muslim refugees because of the association with ISIS. They need to be checked out and, and vetted. Excuse me. Been approached by NBC here, a news group, in interviewing me because of my Trump sign. So I'm here. <laughs> Well, it looks like I sold the Jeep. They wanted 600 million, and all of them come in. Give them welfare, and we as hardworking Americans, we don't even get free medical, they do. Uh, I don't think Sharia law belongs in America. Sharia law is their religion, their way of life. You're, you're women, aren't you? You want, you want Sharia law? Sharia law says women have no rights. Well, I just you don't, can't even drive. I just, I mean, you can't I, even wear long hair. I guess I just, I don't, I don't even, I don't even see that. That's, that's not a risk. You're that's not, not, you're not. not that's risk. what I'm saying. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying Twin Falls. I'm yeah. just saying Sharia law has been brought into the media agenda. My contact information got put on a white supremacist website. Somebody threatened to, to, to take my kids and, and, and do to them what had been done to that girl in the laundry room. I had death threats. Uh, my wife had death threats. One of the ways that I've been looking at this is um, to see Twin Falls as kind of a place where these internet level debates have kind of manifested themselves physically. We had fake news before fake news was a thing. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Kind of as journalists to become the protagonist. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very strange place to be, a very strange place.